Welcome to Shreveport Connection with Tommy. This video is on your raw results for the week of August the 10th, 2020. Birthday from August the 9th through the 11th. You got August 9th birthday, Silas Young, born 1980. Alexa Bliss, 1991. August 10th birthday, Tugboat, also known as Typhoon, 1956. Cyrio Vega, 1964. Wade Barrett, 1980. Congo Kong, 1979. August 7th birthday, the Hulkster himself. Brother, 1953, and ECW manager referee, Bill Alfonso, born 1957. Also, birthday of U Women's NXT UK champion, Kay Lee Ray, she turned 28 years old. Former WWE star, Kamala, aka James Harris, real name, has passed away on Sunday at the age of 70. So, for says, of his passing were not yet young, known, but the word of his passing first came from Hall of Famer Coco Beware. On Twitter, Kamala made his debut, uh, WWE debut in 1984 and will make his Raw in-ring debut in 1993. During his WWE career, he duty with Jake the Snake Roberts, the Hulkster, the Undertaker. He also wrestled in such promotions as Mid-South Wrestling, WCW, USWA, World Class Championship Wrestling, and NWA Tri-State Wrestling. Also, in recent years, Kamala had, had a number of health issues, including a battle with diabetes that required his legs to be amputated. In 2015, he released an autobiography called Kamala Speaks. Kamala was inducted into the Texas Wrestling Hall of Fame in 2012. Send my condolences to Kamala's family and friends through this difficult time. He was also stated he also helped uh, Jerry King Lawler also helped gain him his storyline character as Kamala and his favorite belly pat. Several pro wrestling stars have taken to Twitter in the last 24 hours to remember, remember Kamala, aka James Harris, WWE, AEW, Impact Wrestling, and NWA have also posted tributes to the WWE legend. Ka Kamala. Pa Passed away at the age of 70 on Sunday after going into cardiac arrest. He was diagnosed with COVID-19 this past Wednesday. As he was hospitalized that, that night, he likely contracted the coronavirus from one of his numerous weekly visits to the dialysis center. So, dialysis center is no other, none other than a hospital. So, hospitals are not safe either while even wearing masks. While Kamala went into cardiac arrest and passed away, Sunday afternoon, reportedly seemed fine and in good spirits as recent as uh, Sunday morning. So it got him real quick. Hall of Famer Hulk Hogan had a little few with a Kamala years ago. Remember the big man as, as a kind soul. Hogan tweeted, very saddened by the passing of big, big Jim Kamala. Like everyone else, I would always ask if it was okay to take the leg drop for the finish as requested by the office. Jim would always say, let's just be making that money. He was such a kind soul. Rip, big brother. Only love for you. HH. Hall of Famer Bill Goldberg tweeted on Kamala's passing as well and said he was the first wrestler he ever saw alive. Sad to hear the news of the passing of great, great hashtag Kamala. First wrestler I had the pleasure of seeing live. I was a believer. First emoji, folded hands emoji. Goldberg tweeted. ECW original, the Blue Meanie, also recalled a night he worked with Kamala. Rest in peace, Kamala. Just as much as he was a scary in the ring, he was a sweetheart in real life. He informed me I had knocked out a tooth on a clothesline. After I apologized profusely, he informed me he, he was set to get it pulled anyway. I saved, saved him $30. LOL. Rest in peace, my friend. Meanie treated. Kamala was also remembered by the WWE Hall of Famer Mick Foley, who revealed a lesson he learned when they worked together one night in, in 1986. I'm so sorry to learn of the passing of James Kamala Harris. I wrestled him for 90 seconds in 1986, but the lesson he taught me that night about treating others with respect has never been forgotten. Hashtag Rip Kamala, Foley wrote. WWE producer and Hall of Famer Devon Dudley also thanked Kamala for what he's he's done to help the business. 
to one of the greatest big men to ever set foot in the square circle. Thank you for everything you did for this business. You will be missed. Rest in peace, my brother. Hashtag R.I.P. Devon wrote. On a related note, Jason King of ESPN and Bleacher Report has launched a GoFundMe to benefit Kamala's wife, Emma Jean. King is also is who first reported Kamala's COVID-19 diagnosis after speaking with em Emmer, not Ember, Emmer, E-M-M-E-R, -M -M -E on Sunday. The GoFundMe currently ra has raised $1,723 of a $10,000 goal. With 31 donors as of this video, nothing more than that stated, because this is a, I copied this, uh, back on Sunday. And it's now Tuesday. I'm doing the video Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. Uh, King noted that Kamala's wife quit her job in the last 10 years to serve as his primary caregiver, caretaker after he lost his legs. WWE sadly to learn that the passing of James Harris, known to the WWE fans as Kamala, has passed away to age of 70. They also did a tribute on his passing on my neighbor wall. At the beginning of the show, Kamala passed away. You may be sadly, sadly to learn that James Harris, known as Kamala, has passed away. Impact Wrestling is also saddened to learn of the passing of Kamala. We send our deepest condolences to his friends and family. NWA, the National Wrestling Alliance, sends its deepest condolences to the family and friends of James Harris Kamala. AEW Wrestling. AEW and the wrestling world mourn the passing of wrestling legend James Kamala Harris. Our thoughts are with his family, friends, and fans. The Tommy Dreamer even says, The Ugandan warrior Kamala was an amazing performer. I enjoyed all of his stuff. A character like that can never exist in today's world. Sad to hear his passing, gimmicks are short lived. Gimmicks that can work, wrestle, last forever. Pat. Pat your belly before bedtime. People, they tell people what they mean to you. Hashtag rip Kamala. The Iron Sheik also spoke. God bless the, the Kamala. He always put on a show for the fans. Good big man who worked the gimmick better than most. It break my heart. Hashtag rip Kamala. William Regal, the deepest. My deepest condolences to the family of James Harris. I first saw him on TV when I was a child in the UK and at live shows as a Mississippi Mauler, Big Jim Harris, and then had the pleasure as well. At, Ho at Hulk Hogan, very sudden surpassing of Jim, Jim Kamala. Like everyone else, I would always ask if it was okay to take the leg drop. For the finish, as requested by the officials, the office, Jim would always say, let's just keep making that money. He was such a kind soul. Rip, brother. Only love for you. Uh, being on shows with him in the United States, a lovely man. At Mick Fo Real Mick Foley. I'm so sorry to learn of the passing of James Kamala Harris. I wrestled him for 90 seconds in, the in 1986, but as he taught me that night, about treating others with respect has never been forgotten. Hashtag Rip Hall. Aaron Riff of No EQ says, and Aaron Riff, Hulk Hogan wasn't the only person to body slam Andre the Giant. Hashtag Rip Kamala at WWE. And you see that link right here of Kamala actually body slamming Andre the Giant. At Goldberg says, to hear the passing of great Kamala. First, I had the pleasure of seeing live. It, I was a believer. MVP even said, I believe, I believe. Thank you for the memories. Hashtag Rip Kamala. Bet to him at heart. Heartbroken to hear of the passing away of Big Jim Harris. AKA Kamala. I met my, I met Jim in 1981 in Croydon, close to London, England, where he was breaking in as Mississippi Muller, working with Big, Big Daddy Crabtree. I caught up with him three years later as Kamala in the WWE when he was a terrifying monster. He was working on top with Hulk, the Hulkster. Unlike his heel character, he was one of the friendliest, nicest, happy-go-lucky guys I have ever known in pro wrestling. I had the pleasure of working with him 
1992 when I was WWE Champion. He was great to work with, and I, I smile at the memories of him laughing so hard at my infamous blackboard drawings. He had a great sense of humor, and like Andre, he raced into, into the dressing room to see what my latest cartoon was about. He always had a big smile, despite all of his challenges, including the loss of his both legs. Always a kind and happy gentle soul. I miss him for always being so good to me. Rip Big Jim Harris. WWE has reportedly has planned to introduce female competitors to the Raw Underground later on in, in the show. It was just reported by Russell Votes that Shane Razor is said to be a part of that action on week two of tonight's broadcast. There's no word yet on who Baszler will be facing, but stay tuned for the results. Several female WWE superstars have tweeted about wanting a shot at the Raw Underground in the last week, including Liv Morgan, Zia Leah, or Zia Lee, and Dana Brooke, among others. Baszler used the, the thinking emoji to respond to a tweet from WWE's Matt Camp, who does the injury reports from last week, where he said He'd like to see her capture the Raw Women's title from Sasha Banks and then make her Raw Underground debut. Noting that she's a good fit for the new work shoot style fights that WWE is doing on Monday nights. As she does have MMA history. 2020 Hall of Famer Batista recently spoke with Justin Barrasso at this link of Sports Channel to promote his role in on HBO's Room 104 series, which aired on Sunday night. The Avalanche episode features the animal playing the role of a retired pro wrestler named Raw Dog Avalanche. Batista revealed that he originally was not interested in, in the role because it was centered around the industry that made him, made him famous. When my agent told me it was a professional wrestling themed episode, I said, not a shot in the head. He said it. I've worked really hard to separate these two worlds. Batista, who ended his pro wrestling career with a no holds barred loss to Triple H at WrestleMania 35 in 2019, said he left the sport to be an actor, not a movie star. He admitted that the transition has been tough. I didn't leave wrestling to become a movie star. I left to be an actor. Batista said, I've worked really hard to prove myself and earn the respect of my peers and audiences. This has not been the path of, of least re resistance. It's been a tough route. I really pursued roles that are actors pieces, and I've turned down a lot of roles that would have made me a lot of money. Actual roles that would have been better suited for me as an expresser. There are roles most people expected me to take, but I've chosen to go to the un unexpected route to prove myself as an actor. I feel like people Expect less from a wrestler turned actor. But I've always wanted to be a, ser a serious actor. I guess he didn't uh, forgot about the uh, failure for the Batman mo uh, movie character. And that's a series. When he got X from the trials. The trailer for the current Room 104 can be found on this link. Season where you can see more footage from the episode in the video link. The story focuses on a former pro wrestler who is dealing with brain damage and memory loss. Well, there's a major memory loss. Coping later in his life with childhood abuse and a violent monster it created. He revealed how, how his agent got him interested in the role. One of my agents, named Ryan Abushi, said to me, just read the episode. It's exactly what you're, you've been looking for. It's exactly what we've been talking about. But Jesus said, I read the script, and I was blown away. It wasn't what I thought it was. It was deep and rich and emotional. It was noted that Batista captured a significant combination of confusion, hurt, and shame during the two days of the shooting. He said people have never seen him take on a role like this, and it's the role he's been seeking for a long time. People have never seen me portray a role like this. And he said, there are so many layers to the character <coughs> and the subject matter 
is so sensitive. I am excited for people to see the episode. But there is a huge part of me that is nervous about it. This was the opportunity I was waiting for. I've been searching for a role like this for a long time. Former WWE champion also dis discussed how he's soft-spoken, unlike his pro wrestling presence. I guess he forgot about the so soft-spoken when he uh, was uh, threatening pictures and other things with Mickey James. And said he's been terrified of being on the mic since early in his career. Since the beginning of my wrestling career, I was so terrified to speak, to be on the microphone. So, I subconsciously channel a bit of Hulk Hogan and the Macho Man, said Batista, even when filming Room 104. And it's, it, it's a, it, inten, intentional, that's who I, who, who I channel. That is my first childhood connection to professional wrestling. I remember I did the interview years ago, where it came across like I was doing the impersonation, impersonation of Hulk Hogan. It wasn't my intent, but that was the way it came off. I remember saying, this just isn't me. I'm just not like that guy. I later saw Hogan at a show, and he asked if I was making fun of him. I said, no, I didn't mean that at all. That's just my first connection to the pro professional wrestling. They did promos a certain way, and it still impacts my work. WWE has filed trademark to the names of several WWE NXT stables. On Wednesday, August 5th. But I'm just not get, I'm getting the news to you, to you a week later. The following names were filed for, from last week Gallus, Interstar, Imperium, Grizzle Young Veterans, Legato Fel, Del Fantasma. And you have also filed Terry Mark to several names on Tuesday, August 4th, carrying across Mustache Mountain. KC Cantazero, James Drake, Jake Atlas, and Indy Hartwell. Current ongoing superstar that have not been released due to the pandemic. Mickey James is also advertised to set to WWE TV on Raw tonight. As I doze off during the actual episode, I missed a segment and I had to go to YouTube to find where she was actually on the show. No, no word yet what she will be doing, but there have been some speculation that she will perform in Friday's Tri-Brand Battle Royal, featuring superstars from all three brands to determine who will challenge Bailey for her SmackDown Women's title at SummerSlam. Well, that could be a great storyline to get her an immediate title, title shot and go back to SmackDown, which is a raw talent. Hmm. Mickey was, has been out of, out of ring action since suffering a torn ACL in, in the June 2019 while wrestling Carmella at the WWE Live event. Former Women's Champion has done some WWE main event announcing since then, but was actually cleared to re return to the ring before the COVID-19 pandemic hit. And she's not been there in quite a while. Dolph Ziggler treated about a potential Raw underground fight against Hall of Famer Kurt Angle, but that didn't happen. Ziggler, who won a fight in last week's Raw Underground premiere, tweeted a photo from his World Cup quarterfinal win over Angle at Crown Jewel in 2018. One of the best to ever do it. I think we deserve a rematch. One of these days, Kurt. Hashtag Raw Underground. Ziggler wrote, Angle was released from WWE earlier this year. Part of the company's company-wide cuts due to COVID-19. He is currently focused on, the, on his nutrition business. He's also got Angle Foods. There's a word yet on if Ziggler will re return to action, but he was briefly on in the background. Segment of Raw Underground. Hall of Famer Alondra Blaze took to Twitter and called out WWE for last week's Raw Underground concept that debuted last week. Blaze, who is now going on air, doing on air work with AEW, apparently has an issue with female dancers that were used during last week's Underground premiere. So, we are bringing back half-naked women in the same breath of promoting the evolution and equality of women. Yes, this is entertainment. Yes, this is a skit. Yes, this is acting. Yes, these are wrestlers. Why we resort to women sexually, sexually dancing opening a show? Why not men in Speedos? She wrote, 
equal opportunity. Well, former producer and wrestling veteran, Lance Storm, also commented on that as well. He agreed with, Bla uh, with, with Blaze. I agree with, with your point completely. I will pop huge tonight, though if they do a women's underground, and have three Chippendale type dancers. If you're going to do I, Katie, at least do it for everyone. Equality. So I wrote back. So I guess he wants to see men too. Hmm. Is he also bisexual? Raw Underground will continue on, to, on tonight's show with week two of the new work true style fights concept. And now raw results to see what actually happened. Tonight's Raw opened up with a graphic memory of WB legend Kamala, who passed away at the age of 70 on Sunday. We cut to a standard raw video package. Live on tape delay from the former center in Orlando, Florida. Tom Phillips welcomes us to the raw on the USA Network as the crowd of developmental trainees cheers on. As it's already taped, so how can it be live? He's joined by Byron Sexton and Samoa Joe. And that's a hype tonight's show. We go right to the ring with Samoa Joe with a microphone. He hyped up the Summer Sam contract signing between Dominic Mysterio and Seth Rollins. Joe says this contract signing is a bit different because one of the competitors will be signing the contract that also makes him a WWE superstar. Joe goes on and introduces Rollins first. Out he comes with Murphy. Byron says Joe must avoid a physical conversation, confrontation with Rollins tonight if he wants to keep his job because Joe is not medically cleared to compete, supposedly. Storyline. Dominic Mysterio is out next, and he's carrying a kendo stick. Rollins isn't happy with this. Joe takes the stick and jokes that this will be safer with him. Joe and Rollins have words out. Rollins disagrees with Joe and rants about how he's given Dominic, Rey Mysterio, and Alan Black options, but they all made the wrong choice. His opinion. And they may go for Joe if he's not careful. Rollins goes on about how he's made sacrifices for the greater good. He wonders when this will finally be enough. Dominic says it's never going to be enough. Dominic says Rollins may makes excuses for the ungodly things he's done. He says Ray and Alistair aren't the same. Rollins uses the greater good as an excuse, but the greater good he fights for is for himself. Dominic says Rollins says Dominic is so ungrateful. Rollins just says Dominic is here is here about to live. His dream as a WWE superstar and doesn't even realize it's all because of Rollins. Rollins says he should be thanked. Dominic says Rollins is right. This way, his dream, but now, his dream is to kick Rollins' butt at SummerSlam. Rollins laughs, but Dominic stares him down. Rollins says, we all know Dominic wouldn't last seconds in, in a standard wrestling match with him. Rollins says, he's the best wrestler of this generation. So he's going to going to do Dominic a favor. So Dominic sees handy with a Kendo stick. Dominic can bring that or any tool into the toolbox at, to summertime. Rollins wants there to be no excuse for Dominic or his family when Rollins is his career. They both sign the contract. Dominic also signs his contract making him a WWE superstar. He wouldn't be on TV if he was already a WWE superstar. Rollins congratulates Dominic and calls for a round of applause. For the newest WWE superstar, now get the heck out of my ring. Rollins has a match with Humberto Carrillo next. He tells Dominic to grab a seat and take notes for what he's forcing Rollins to do in two weeks at SummerSlam. Music hits and out comes Carrillo. Carrillo makes his way out and greets Dominic at ringside. Test Rollins ready as we go to commercial. Back to the right, Rollins has control of Carrillo. Mysterio watches from ringside with a kendo stick. Carrillo fights free and mounts offense for a pop. Rollins goes to the floor for a breather. Carrillo stays on top of him and beats him around. Rollins gets, sends Carrillo into the plexiglass barrier. Rollins returns to the ring as Murphy tries to attack Carrillo, but Mysterio makes a save. Carrillo and Rollins go back at it in the ring now. Carrillo dodges a shot and doubles Rollins with a kick to the head. To the head. Rollins crosses Carrillo on the top and climbs up for the belly of the back. Suplex. Carrillo knocks him to the, to the mat. Murphy gets on the apron for a distraction. Mysterio knocks him off the apron with a kendo stick. Rollins catches Carrillo on the way down and then super kicks him. 
while they're coming back with a power bomb and and the song while the covers for the pin while staring Mysterio down winner of the match Seth Rollins after the bell Murphy attacks Mysterio at ringside and stomps away Murphy rolls Mysterio in the ring and they double team him to booze Mysterio avoids the stomp and they keep fighting but Rollins and Murphy get the upper hand again Murphy brings the kid stick in the ring and unloads on Mysterio with it all over the ring Murphy rips Dominic's shirt off and Rollins continues the kid stick shots Rollins shots Dominic in the ropes and continues the beating while turning Mysterio in the camera Murphy also a little over shot to Dominic's back from the floor the beating continues if we come to commercial with Rollins looking on from the stage with Murphy as there was some momentarily hesitations with Rollins yelling at, at Murphy so there's tensions going in the, in that faction again. Back for the break, we'll see what just happened between Rollins and, and Mysterio. And now to play up the seriousness of the situation. We get a video package on the recent attacks from Retribution. Andrade versus Angelo Dawkins was up next. We'll go back to the ring. Out comes Andrade with Zelina Vega and Angel Garza. Vega takes the mic and dismisses the idea. She had a Raw Tag Team Champion Montez Ford poisoned last week. She says she had nothing to do with it. She asked what kind of manager would she be if she ruined the title shot for her clients at SummerSlam. Vega says Bianca Blair could learn a, a lot from her. Vega goes on and says she had nothing to do with the poisoning, but she will have everything to do with the title change at SummerSlam. Music hits and hits next and out comes Raw Tag Team Champions Angela Dawkins of the Street, street Profits. <laughs> Dawkins walks in the ring, and the lights go out, which could be another sign of the retribution. Back to commercial, as Dawkins does his entrance in the dark. Back to the right, Thompson shows us footage of Big Show on his Netflix show game on a comedy crossover. We go back to the ring, and they're going at it. Back and forth to start for several minutes. Dawkins mounts offense and launches Andrade across the ring with an overhead suplex. Dawkins misses in the corner, and Andrade beats him down. Andrade with a running knee to the face. Dawkins still kicks out of two. Andrade goes up top, but Dawkins catches him in midair on the way down with a big right hand. Dawkins covers, but Vega gets on the apron to the shot the referee. Spoiling the pin, Bianca Blair appears at ringside and pulls Vega off the apron to the floor. There's chaos out as Andrade charges, but Dawkins catches him with a cash out, driving him into the mat. Dawkins covers with a pin and a win. Could we be getting a singles push for Angelo? We'll see what happens in the next few weeks. After Bell, Garza checks on Vega while Belair yells at him. Belair brings Vega into the ring, but Vega retreats back to the floor. Belair stands tall in the ring and tosses Vega as we go to commercial. But we got a match up next. Zelina Vega versus Bianca Blair. Back for the break, Bianca Blair is in control of Vega. Vega jumps on her back, but Belair resists and sends her flying to the mat. Vega begs Belair to back off. Belair shows off some. And they have words. Belair grabs Vega's hair to keep her from retreating. Vega with a shot to the gut and a crucifix pin attempt. But it's back. Vega counters again and applies a triangle choke. Belair powers up, but Vega tries to roll her into a pin. Belair overpow overpowers again. Sands Vega on her face. Belair talks more trash to Vega and tells her to get up. Belair takes Vega to the corner and loads with kicks and punches. Bending her down as the referee warns her. Well, you got a five count. Bella goes to back to unloading as, and the referee gets in between them. Vega with a cheap shot to the eye, which is another thumb shot to the eye during the chaos. Vega with a takedown for a two count as Andrade and Angel Garza cheer on from ringside. Vega keeps control and sons Bell there in the corner, dropping her again. Vega charges with a double knee to the face for a close two count. Vega keeps Belair down now and talks to him trash as Angelo Dawkins encourages Belair from ringside. Vega fights the KOD attempt off. Belair with an elbow. Vega counters and sends Belair flying face first into the middle, middle row. Vega leaps from the second rope for a crossbody, but Belair catches her in midair. Belair tosses Vega into the air and drives her into the mat for a pop. Belair finally mounts more offense and tosses Vega by her, her hair. Belair charges into the corner and hit. But hits the ring post, head first. It was shoulder first, 
and Vega moves out of the way. Vega works Belair over and mounts her in the corner while she's talking some trash, yelling that she didn't do it again. Due to poison. Belair counters from coming out of the corner with a power bomb. Belair then Joss Vega face first in the top turnbuckle. Belair Joss Vega in the middle of the ring with a KOD covering for the pin and the win. After the match, Belair sounds tall in the middle of the ring as we go to replays. Charlie Caruso interviews Belair and, and Dawkins in the ring, asking about evidence on the poisoning. Belair brags about on beating Vega. I won't give an update on my intense sports condition. Dawkins says they are, they are the Street Puppets and Summer Sam is two weeks away. The No Way Forward is missing the biggest party of the summer. Dawkins says they're bringing the, the ruckus and the Red Cups. And they want to the smoke. Vega Andrade and, Ar and Garza chomp Dawkins for the ramp. To end that segment. We see how Apollo Crews re retained his U U.S. title over in MVP, MVP last week. MVP was shown backstage out with Bobby Lester, Sheldon Benjamin. He will be hosting a special investigation edition of the VIP Lounge tonight. Nice commercial. Back to the right, out comes the hurt, hurt business. MVP, Bobby Lester, Sheldon Benjamin. MVP says this is a very different VIP Lounge because he's not in the mood to pop bottles. He and his colleagues would rather pop knees and ligaments. MVP goes on about how there really is a conspiracy in WB. He goes on about how he's a world-class competitor and how he is supposed to win titles in these unsafe working conditions. He blames last week's lighting issues on the U.S. championship loss to Apollo Crews. He says the lights beat, beat him last week, not Crews. MVP wonders where Crews is. He goes on and out comes Cruz as his music hits. Cruz dismisses MVP's complaints and brags about walking around with, with this expensive title MVP has created. Supposedly, MVP says all Cruz does is make bad decisions. Cruz says he's allowed to make bad decisions because he's a bad man. They continue trading shots on the mic. Cruz standing outside of the ring on the first floor. Goes on and says the only lights going out at Summer Sam will be MVPs. MVP orders Lashley and Benjamin to hit the floor and attack. Cruz immediately runs in the ring and sends MVP out with Lashley and Benjamin. Cruz picks up the VIP lounge couch and tosses it out to, to the Hurt Business when you go to commercial. And the match we got next is Shelton Benjamin versus Paula Cruz. Non title. Back to the right. Non title match is underway. We get a block power bomb early on as we side they side, side each other up and again and go at it. Shelton with a big drop kick on the on the champ. Cruz comes right back with a, a suplex for a two count as MVP and Bobby Lexington are gone. Benjamin comes right back with a big power bomb or close two count. And then another. Benjamin keeps control and sends Cruz to the floor. Where MVP and Lashley talk down to him. Referee counts, but Benjamin brings Cruz back in. Benjamin chokes Cruz with the middle rope. Benjamin beats Cruz around the ring some more. Cruz explodes out of nowhere and takes Benjamin down with a crossbody. The crowd rallies as Cruz comes back with a kick to the back of, of the neck, sending Benjamin back down. Cruz counters offense and rams Benjamin to, to the corner with shoulder thrust. Cruz keeps the attack going. Benjamin blocks the toss, power bomb, but Cruz catches Benjamin with a power sound. Cruz with a standing moonsault for a two count. Lashley tries to interfere from the floor, but Cruz kicks him away. Benjamin takes advantage of the distraction and rolls Cruz up out of nowhere for the pin and the win. After the match, Lashley immediately hits the ring and goes for the full Nelson, but MVP calls him off. MVP says he needs Cruz and health as Homer Sam so he can take the title from him. MVP tells Cruz that he's looking out for him. Cruz responds with a big kick to the, to the head, dropping, dropping MVP. Cruz immediately retreats with the title as, his, as the music hits. How are they going to do it? Triple threat. Because with a, a non-title win, that makes him number one contender. Sheldon Benjamin. Uh, Tom has some breaking news. He shows us footage from moments ago with the Russian region throwing two center rocks through a front window at the WWE Performance Center. When the bricks were thrown, or supposedly, there was a security guard. They were, they were confronted by a security guard outside the building before that, but they yelled at him and told him to go. Back to commercial. Cherish Harper's backstage with the returning Mickey James. 
the segment that I missed. Mickey says she's happy to be back and leave the locker room. But if the girl thinks she doesn't have, have gold on her mind, they're sadly mistaken. Lana and Natalia walk up to interrupt. Laughing at Mickey, Mickey ends up insulting them both and walking off. Lana and Natalia, who are dressed alike, both say Mickey was so rude. I think Natalia dyed her hair to look like Lana. And Lana's got brunette hair now. Tom leads us to a video package on last week's Raw the Ground debut. Ivar is backstage with Demi, uh, Demi Burnett of The Bachelor. Eric, Cedric Alexander, and Ricochet walk up looking for Ivar to get ready for, the, for their match. Demi says it's her fault because they were talking. She thinks Ivar is cute, but Eric, not so much. Demi walks off and the others laugh at Eric. Back to Myrtle. Other bike of ready is Ricky Shane, Santa Grand, Alexander versus Akira Dalazala and his ninjas. And his ninjas. Well, back for the break, out comes the Viking Raiders, Eric and Omar. Checker, Alexander, and Ricochet are waiting for them. 24-7 champion, the Kuros Ozawa, is out with several of his ninjas. The baby faces start off destroying the ninjas with, with ease. This goes on for a few minutes, and the Viking, Vikings, Cedric, and Ricochet dominate the action. Ozawa looks to go, grab his saddle, and retreat as, and squash, as, as the squash continues. Vikings finish off one of the ninjas with the Viking experience, and covers them for the pin to win. After the bell, one of the ninjas es escorts Horizontal to the ramp to safety. We see the ninja waving a referee, waving for a referee from the back. It appears to be the referee comes to the ramp as the ninja rolls Horizontal up to win the 24 7 title. Ninjas removes his mask in his hard truth and now becomes the 38 time champion. Truth was away with the title as it means it hits. As the other ninjas also regroup, they chase him around. Suddenly, out of nowhere. Charlie Cruz is backstage with the WWE Champion, Drew McIntyre, asking about last week's comments on Randy Orton and if he will have an eye on Orton's match tonight. Drew says he wouldn't say something if he didn't mean it. He goes on about Orton taking out other people for self-preservation to make sure he's on top of WWE for many years to come. He took the torch from WWE Hall of Famer Mick Foley years ago. Drew promises to rip that torch from Orton's hand at, at SummerSlam, kick him in the head as hard as he possibly can. Drew says Orton will realize that evolution just pass him, over, pass him by. Drew goes to walk off, but Caruso asks, what happens if Kevin Owens happens to rip the torch from Orton tonight? Drew says if that's the case, he and Owens will be having a long talk about the, the future of Raw. Back to Merkel. Peyton Royce versus Liv Morgan. Back to the break, and out comes Liv Morgan with Ruby Riot. We see what happened with the Iconics last Monday night. Out next are the Iconics. Peyton Royce with Billy Kay. Iconics take the mic and start running Liv and, and Riot down. Ta taking shots and bragging about how they've been shaping their Iconic futures. Liv goes to work to start the match, but Royce shuts her down and sends her to the floor. Royce follows and rocks Liv. Liv blocks a, a shot in, into the apron. Liv unloads out, slamming Royce's face into the apron as the referee counts. Liv brings it back in the ring, but runs right into a, a spin kick from Royce for booze. Royce beats on Liv while she's down now. Liv counters a shot and rolls Royce up for a two count. They both collide and go in the middle of the ring as the crowd rallies. Kay ends up getting on the apron, but Ruby gets, gets her off. Referee sees see Ruby, and this leads to a distraction to Liv. Royce takes advantage of the distraction. And ends up hitting the deja vu for the pin and the win. After the match, Iconic have right to leave as the music hits. Riot joins Liv on the ring, and it looks like there's some tension between them still. Shane McMahon approaches his giant security guard in the back. Who is W former center trainee? Jordan on McBehan. They are ready for tonight's Raw Underground fights, which Shane tells the camera is up next. Back to Marshall. Back to the right. Shane is hosting another Raw Underground segment. As you're going into the third hour. Uh, the first fight is already going as Kyle Bloom goes at it with Riddick Moss. They brawl off the platform and over into some still leaning against the wall. They fight back in the ring. It's a, it's a ring with no ring ropes. No poles. 
and Sharon works the mic. There are men and women surrounding the platform again tonight. Moss ends up going for the broom guy and then dropping him with a big right hand. Shane and the referees call it. And Shane hops on the on the ring to talk things up. Moss yells out and celebrates with the win. Shane wonders what will happen next. And they go back to the real ring, as it's already taped. You know, Oscar versus Bailey. With the, uh, you know, Bailey wins. I mean, uh, Sasha, uh, Oscar wins. She gets a title shot against Bailey. So you know that's going to win. We go back to the ring for out comes Oscar. WWE tag ta team ta champions are out next. SmackDown Women's Champion, Bailey, with Sasha Banks. And uh, Oscar will earn a, a SummerSlam title shot if for Banks if she can win this match. The bell rings and Oscar immediately attacks Bailey. Oscar with a hip attack and more aggressive offense early on for a two count. Oscar stays on top of Bailey. Bailey escapes to the floor. For a breather, Oscar follows and Bailey gets it, gets leveled again. Oscar beats on Bailey and brings it back in the ring as Banks looks on. Oscar goes to the top, but Bailey cuts her off and drives her into the mat. Face first for a two count. Bailey works Oscar around the ring and does a suplex for a two count. Bailey drops Oscar again for another quick pin attempt as the crowd rallies. Bailey grounds Oscar as the lights start flickering in the arena. Bailey keeps Oscar down, not paying attention to the lights going down, just doing like a dance show. Talking trash about Carrie Sane being gone and trying to get the pin. Banks shows her on. Bailey kicks Oscar around and taunts her, but Oscar keeps getting back up. Oscar charges and backsides Bailey for a two count. They tangle as Oscar nails a kick to the face. Lights are flicking again with both competitors down. Oscar starts mounting more offense and hits a hip attack for a two count. Bailey ends up turning it around and sending Oscar into ropes. Oscar dodges a knee attack in the corner, getting Bailey stuck upside down. Oscar unloads for a two count. We go to commercial as Bailey rolls to the floor for a breather and Banks yells at her to get up. Like she's going to get involved in the match. Uh, back for the break. Oscar nails a uh, missile drop kick for another two count. More back and forth. Bailey drops Oscar into a knee bar. Due to a quick distraction from Banks, Oscar finally makes it to the, to the bottom rope to break the hold. Bailey drops Oscar's ankle with a DDT and covers for a two count. Bailey focuses on Oscar's leg now while Banks cheers her on. Bailey stomps on Oscar's right in front of the of Banks as Banks taunts her. Banks ends up getting a cheap shot in on Oscar's leg while the referee wasn't looking. Bailey covers for a two count. Bailey unloads it on Oscar in the corner now. Bailey misses the kick and Oscar rolls her up. Oscar drops Bailey into the Oscar lock. Bailey struggles to get out. Oscar takes her right, right into an arm bar as Banks looks on. Bailey turns that into a two count. Oscar charges for the double knees but Bailey counters and rolls Oscar into an Indian death lock. Oscar finally breaks it and turns it into an ankle lock. Bailey keeps trying, but Oscar tightens the hole. Bailey powers up, but Oscar takes her down into a pin instead. Bailey kicks out of two. Oscar catches Bailey with a double knees now, but Bailey still kicks out at two. Banks looks concerned as the crowd rallies again for Oscar. And somebody had talent is doing Oscar's dance. Oscar and Bailey fight to their feet with spinning back faces blocked. Oscar comes right back with a big knee to the face. Bailey cries out for Banks. Oscar takes Bailey to the top, but Bailey knocks her to the mat. Bailey leaps up, leaps and nails the flying elbow, but Oscar, Oscar kicks out just in time. Bailey rocks Oscar into the corner with a spinning back fist. Using Oscar's move, Bailey capitalizes with a buckle bomb in the corner. Oh, wait a minute. I thought the buckle bomb was banned. Some people are still using it. Well, well, at least, uh, What's his name? Uh, uh, Seth Rollins ain't using it no more. Bailey mocks the chains as walk, uh, walk, but it backfires and Oscar drops her into Oscar lot. Bailey taps out. Winner new number one contender to Sasha Banks for SummerSlam. Oscar. After the match, Banks hits the ring. Oscar goes out and recovers on the outside. We go to replace. Oscar celebrates her title shot as the two side, sides stare each other down. Shane Man welcomes us back to Raw Underground. Arturo Ruiz is on the platform now. Shane talks up Arturo's amateur background. The other fighter charges, but Ruiz easily sends him to the report. No name announced. I'll give you that after the show ends. Show results. He charges again, but Ruiz fights him off and slams him. 
Ruiz pounds the other fighter and keeps him down. They're told to get back up and fight after Ruiz dominates. Ruiz ends up slamming the other fighter on his head, getting a win. Shane raises his arm as the referee checks on the, lo on the losing fighter. Shane asks if anyone wants to take Ruiz on. He says, we'll see what happens. What comes up next? Back to Murphy. Back to the ring. Shane is in the ring again with a big man from last week. Dama Cotto. You know, Baba Matundi, whatever you think his name is. He destroys another fighter and wins after grabbing a fistful of jewels from below the belt. Well, you know, he grabs his crotch. Shane Baser is at, says he's at ringside for her for her debut in this melee. As she is uh, staring Kato now, the big man. Shane gets in between them to stop them ten the tension. She's wanting to challenge him, but Baylor gets on the platform and, sit, and Shane wonders who will step up to fight her. Baylor targets a female fighter and rings out before she can come in. Baylor attacks her and brings her in, destroying her. Another woman enters and attacks her from from behind. Baylor fights her off as well. Emily and, and Dulles is announced as her name, attacks next, and they tangle, but Baser puts her down with a submission. Three women, all three competitors, attack Baser at once now, and she takes them all out with ease. Baser makes Emily tap out to get the pin and the win. The Duke. Uh, Shane tells us to check back next week to see what will happen on Raw Underground. Camera comes back to the parking lot and to see retribution with, with the car that has been turned over and possibly lit on fire or just smoking. I guess they want to smoke too. They jump around on the car, yell and scream. They run off. Tom can't understand what Russian Bridge wants. And some of these guys are not the same ones that debuted in the first segment. And your main event, Randy Orton versus Kevin Owens. Somewhat. I should say. We go back to the ring. Out comes Randy Orton with a Hall of Famer Rick Flair. They have a discussion. We go back to the commercial. Back to the ring. Announced for all talk tonight are Shane Baser and Bianca Blair. We go back to the ring. Kevin Owens is out first. He's all business. Actually, he's all out. He's out last. Uh, he's all business staring down Orton. The bell rings and they lock up. Orton takes it to the corner and they tangle. Orton drops Owens with his shoulder first. Orton runs again, but Owens drops him. Orton joins the Nature Boy on the floor for a breather as Owens talks trash to Flair. Owens goes goes out and beats Orton. Owens goes out and beats Orton around the ringside area. Orton with a thumb to the eye to turn it around. Orton sends Owens into, into the barrier and then on top of the announce table. Owens counters and slams Orton face first into, into the table. Orton brings it back in and stomps away on Orton while he's while he's down, yelling at him and taunting him. Owens also taunts Flair with a, with a big woo to ringside. Orton turns it around as Owens approaches in the corner. Orton boxes the center. Owens boxes RKO. Owens stun, stuns Orton with a super kick. Owens nails a can corner cannonball for a pop. Owens clutches his shoulder as Orton goes to the floor. Sitting up against the barrier for a breather, Owens goes right out and delivers a cannonball into the barrier. Owens yells out as he goes back to commercial. Back to the right, Owens continues to dominate. Stopping away on Orton. Orton goes to the corner, but Owens unloads with chops as Flair looks on. Owens beats Orton down with the right hands in the middle in the corner now. Orton stumbles to the floor. Owens follows, but Orton whips him his hurt shoulder first into the cell ring steps. Orton smashes Owens face first into plexiglass now. Orton returns to the ring at the eight count, but goes back out to break the count. Orton whips Owens hard into cell steps. Referee counts, but Owens rolls back in at eight. Orton works on Owens while he's down now, taking his time and taunting Owens. Orton keeps Owens down with boots as the crowd tries to rally. Orton drops a big knee across the face for a two count. Orton grounds Owens with a headlock. Orton gouges at the eye while keeping Owens down. Owens fights up and out, rocking Orton in the face with forearm. Orton fights back and the trade strikes. Orton with an uppercut. Owens drops him with a clothesline. 
and then hits the senton on flare. I mean, as flare, chair, chairs up Orton on. Owen gets up first. Orton avoids pop up power bomb and then goes to the floor to regroup. Owens follows, but Orton nails the bell in your back suplex onto the announce table. Referee count, and Orton brings it back in the, ri in, in the ring for a two count. Orton can't believe it. Orton takes Owens to the corner, uh, to the top now, then rocks him. Orton climbs up and keeps fighting with Owens up, up high. Owens finally headbutts Orton to the mat. Owens follows up with a big senton for a close two count. Flair cheers on Orton as Owens waits for him to get up in the corner. Owens drop, drops down like Orton would when he's doing for the RKO. Orton gets up, immediately blocks the center from Owens and drops it. Owens with the RKO. Junior doesn't give him the RKO out of nowhere. And covers for the pin and the win. Orton wins. After the match, Orton stands tall as the music hits. We come back to Orton posing in the corner as Flair cheers him on from the ring. Flair raises Orton's arm and shows him off to the crowd. Orton wants a mic now. Orton tells Flair to stay here for a minute. Orton wants to ask him, ask him for a favor. For him to stay put because they have something to talk about and to celebrate. Orton tells Flair to stay put for now. Flair is all smiles and we go back to Marshall. Back for the break, we see how Orton just defeated Owens. Owens is in the ring with Flair now as the music continues. Orton says he has every right to be upset with Flair, but he just can't be angry at Nature Boy. Orton can't find a way in his heart, but he has every right to be pissed off, pissed at Flair because this match with Owens wasn't necessary. Orton says Flair's ego got him in this match in the first place last week. Blood looks on confused. Orton goes on about Flair being the dirtiest player in the game and how he's grown up with, with Flair around him, learning everything he knows. Orton can't be mad at the Nature Boy. Orton recalls 2000 or 2003 in Peoria, Illinois, when he got himself into some trouble. Nobody came to help but one person, Flair, who, who bailed him out of a predicament that only his dumb, dumb butt, punk 22-year-old butt, could get into. Orton not only loved Flair then, he respected him. Orton no longer loves or respects Flair because that player is a liability to Orton and his career and everything he's trying to get done. Orton says Flair took him under his wing years ago because he hoped Orton could be the son he wished he had. Flair looks to get emotional and Orton taunts him for pushing a, a few tears out. Orton yells at Flair for only being good for crying these days. Orton says this isn't the Ric Flair who taught him everything he knows and the same Ric Flair who everyone else knows. He mentions and takes shots at Flair having a pacemaker and being in a coma before. Orton calls Flair a juggie for the spotlight and says he's washed up, but he can't do it anymore. Orton goes on about the WWE title opportunity he has at SummerSlam and says Flair has only been worried about himself. Flair takes the mic and says, He's taking this very personally, but he wants to tell Orton about, him, about himself. Flair says, that old Ric Flair isn't here anymore. Orton is right. Yes, he does like the spotlight, and he likes to call Orton the greatest because he is. Yes, he wants to be a part of the spotlight. He's 70 years old and on Raw. Flair goes on praising Orton and says he's here because he wants Orton's approval. Flair wants, him, wants to be, be there when Orton breaks... His world title record, not John Cena. Flair goes on calling Orton the greatest and saying he does want to be here with Orton. Flair says he can't be, get mad because after the time he spent in intensive care and in a coma, he woke up and all he wanted in his life was to tell the people he hadn't told that he loved them and, very, and to make sure everybody he loved knew how he felt. Flair said he's not trying to fake to take anything from Orton. He's just Charlotte Flair's dad, who wants to be part of Orton's life. Orton tosses the mic from a player's hand and grabs him for a big hug in the middle of the ring. The crowd applauds. Orton gra grabs Flair again and whispers something in his ear. They nod and look to be on the same page. Flair turns his back and Orton hits him with a low blow. Orton brings Flair back to the mat. Slowly, Flair yells out 
in pain from the low rope. Lights flicker again in the arena. The crowd boos. Orton stands, stands over Flair now, looking down at him on the mat. Orton backs up to, into the corner from the punk kick. But the lights go out for a second. They come right back up. And they all, and they have all, as they have all night. Orton waits for Flair to get up. Orton delivers the punk kick just as the lights come back on. Go, go out again. We don't see the punk kick, so it's probably held back. Lights come back up, and Flair is laid out, selling the punk kick. The crowd boos. Orton kneels down and whispers something in Flair's ear. Orton just sits there looking at Flair now. We, we see Drew McIntyre. WWE Champion rushing the ring, but Orton quickly retreats to the floor. Drew checks on Flair and calls Orton as an evil son of a B-word. WWE producer Adam Pearce appears as ref referees and medics come to the ring to check on Flair. Orton sees and looks on from the stage, pacing around. The crowd chants, shame, at Orton as he looks on. Drew stands up and stares back at Orton, where warning him that he will get what's coming to him at SummerSlam. Roll goes off, roll goes off the air. With Orton and McIntyre staring back at each other. As they did with, it, with week one. Well, they were mumbling something. You know how, you know how Orton does all that. As they did with week one, WWE used several local indie wrestlers as enhanced mentalities in week two of Wild Underground during last night's Raw episode. We see before how last night's work, Shoe Sal fights, saw so Reddick Miles defeat second generation superstar Cal Bloom. While Arturo Ruiz defeated in enhancement talent, and Dawakalo defeated another enhancement talent. Raw in the ground week two also featured the first week women's action as Shayna Baszler beat up Emily Andulis and two female enhancement talent. In an update, Mikey Spandex was the Indian wrestler who lost to Ruiz. Spandex also appeared last week, winning the very first Raw Underground bout over Indian wrestler Dante Marquise Carter. Spandex and Carter team together on the Indies at Task Force. Carter was also used this week in a losing effort to Kato. The female enhancement talents used for Baylor's, Baylor's fight were Indy wrestlers Marina Tucker and Sophia Casillo. Casillo is a talent who Baylor attacked at ringside before Tucker entered the ring. And that concludes my results for us for all this week. Peace out. See you on If you don't know, call me, brothers and sisters.